Okay, okay, Google. What's the cheapest power meter? For best affordable power meter. Here's a summary from TriggerLab.com. One, Favero Asioma, best performing power meter. Two, Garmin Vector 3 thirds S, best pedal power meter. Three, PowerTap P1, best budget pedal power meter. Dude, good. <laughs> uh, Google straight up said, but she said it differently. I must be pronouncing these wrong. Google said that this is the number one best performing power meter for the price. So I mean, video done, I guess. Hey, VC here. So today we're talking about power meters and what's the best bang for the buck. I think it's, there's a couple things you wanna look at when you're looking for a power meter. And so let's talk about those. Before we get into that, power meters, you should get one. No matter what kind of rider you are, I only ride once a month, I race every day, it doesn't matter dude, a power meter is going to be your friend. Now usually, in the past, the, the price to get into a power meter has been ridiculous dude. It's no longer that way. You can get into power meters for as low as $400, maybe even lower, but you know when you start to go that much lower, it's like, is it really even worth it? And that's kind of what we're gonna talk about is like, the, where the price falls and what you get and what you should expect from your power meter. But the first power meter I got was a Gen 1 Stages one-sided, okay? And it was terrible. The thing might work, it might not work. It spiked, I would say I did 4,000 watts. You know, it's like, dude, what are you talking about? But I still was able to get introduced into the love of staring at numbers while riding in beautiful places. After the stages had let me down so many times, I got into the PowerTap P1 pedals, and that's where I really fell in love with power pedals in general. I just loved the concept because I was able to take those pedals from, from one bike to another bike. You know, I'd have a TT bike or maybe I would travel and I needed to ride someone else's bike. Uh, when I went to Arkansas, I took my power pedals with me, so then I just, I had a power meter on this other bike that you know what I mean? I didn't have to, it was phenomenal. So I was able to take my power profile and transfer it to another bike very easily. Then I got the uh, Farvaro Asioma power pedals, dual sides. They, it's like 400 bucks for the for one side, 650 for two side, which is like a really low price point to get in. But I ran them at Dirty Kanza, okay? I went through water with them. They really mainly stay on my gravel bike. And so I have hammered these pedals in the ground for the last year. So let's break this down into affordability, reliability, and longevity. To me, the value of a power meter is easily a thousand bucks. Now, I use them all the time. I really like power. So maybe for you, if it's like, well, I, I'm barely ever gonna look at it, it would be nice, but eh. You know, then your value of that comes way down. But essentially what you're looking at price-wise is anywhere from about $300 which I think is the lowest price you can get for a power meter. Uh, and then you can go all the way up to, you know, $1,200. Uh, the Garmin Vector pedals, I think are a thousand. The P1 PowerTap pedals uh, right now are about 900 bucks. You can get stages dual-sided for a thousand, but, but usually it ranges between a thousand for two sides, double-sided, and 700 to 800 for one side. That's where these guys come in at such a low, like they're so much lower than the competition that it's, my initial thought was they have to be garbage, dude. There, there's no way that they're gonna be good or, or reliable or, or have any sort of benefit because dual-sided, they're 650, one-sided, they're 400. And now, I ran a one-sided stages power meter for a long time. When I went to dual-sided, I could not tell the difference. The, the numbers looked the same to me, you know what I mean? It was wasn't really a humongous like, oh yes, now I have dual sided. I mean, there's definitely benefits to it and it's a, a maybe a little bit smoother, there's more data points, maybe it's a little more consistent. But either way, dude, one of my biggest recommendations for the last couple years has been just, just get a one-sided power meter if you're not that into it because you probably aren't gonna need that extra data points. Okay, okay Google, what's the cheapest power meter? Best affordable power meter. Here's a summary from TriggerLab.com. One, Favero Asioma, best performing power meter. But again, I'm trying to stay factual, bro. I don't, I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm not trying to be all super emotional. Affordability wise, the Asioma Favero power pedals take the cake. 
So, so far for the last year, these have been extremely reliable. One of the biggest parts of that reliability is the battery not dying. My stages, bro, it would come on or not come on. I had no idea. It was just, it was so random, you know, and gets so frustrating because you'd be in the middle of an interval and then just like, no longer is it reading. With my power tap pedals and my stages, I'd actually bring batteries on me just in case. The Farvaro Asayoma pedals, bro, they charge. So, boom. Okay, so you just plug this into the wall and then you just charge your pedals. I know that doesn't seem like a, a good thing or, or a highlight, but holy smokes, it's amazing, dude. I've, um, I've only charged them maybe once or twice in the last year, but so there's never really a point in which you're gonna be out on the road and then your battery's gonna die because you can just always plug them in wherever your bike is. So you just, as soon as you're done riding, just throw, throw them on the charger, right? The other thing is that the, uh, power meter is on the inside. So unlike my power tap pedals where I would strike the ground and a lot of the computer and all the calculation stuff was on the bottom, you know what I mean? It, it feels like if you pedal struck a rock that you're not really gonna damage the power meter. But with that being said, I did do exactly that. I pedal struck the shit out of, out of it right here, dude. And uh, no big deal works so i think that with a lot of power meters dude the reliability you know it just sort of comes down to is it gonna is it gonna be consistent is it gonna give you the same numbers and i think at this point almost all power meters are gonna do a pretty good job at that maybe a couple years ago they weren't i think the charging part of this makes it it makes it one of the most reliable power meters, you know, on the market. There's another thing too that it works with oval chain rings, osymmetric chain rings. They have, they're the only power pedal that does that. And I've always wanted to run osymmetric power uh, chain rings, you know what I mean? But my power tap pedals, uh, they wouldn't work with that. And so these actually work with that. And the last thing comes down to longevity, right? If you're going to spend X amount of dollars, okay, so $400 for one side, $650 for two, which again is, it's just the best on the market, man. It, there is really, I don't think any other power meter, and we already, we already we Googled it, uh, everyone is either higher or at the same price, but not in a pedal form, okay? And so here's why I freaking love, love pedals, dude, is that you can take your power profile and move it across bikes. So let's say you make the investment of $400 to get one of these, and then you get new bikes down the line, you just take your pedal and go. You know, and so now the longevity and what you have spent your money on ends up becoming, the life of that becomes so much better, right? So if you spend $1,000 on a crank-based power meter and then you get another bike, well, you're not gonna swap your crank every time you ride the other bike, you know, or I'm not gonna do that. But with a power pedal, you can. So you can have one power meter for multiple bikes. And bro, that just, uh, for me, that seals the deal on getting power pedals, however you do that, is absolutely the way to go. Now, the Asayoma, the Farvaro Asayoma power pedals, they're the best priced. They work on osymmetric chain rings. They're waterproof, they're super durable. So like if you're comparing, if you're comparing every power meter, I feel like almost all of them are gonna be very similar, except for these are a lower price and you can put them on other bikes. So just saying that everyone, every power meter reads really good, is reliable, is durable, and, and all those things. The other ones can't swap from one bike to another bike within five minutes. And the price point is solid. So again, my recommendation has always been get a one-sided power pedal, however that may be, and, and, and let that be your introduction into power. And it's gonna change the way you ride, dude, and it's gonna be amazing because power meters are freaking awesome. Now, if you're a little bit more into power, 650, and get two power, you know, the dual-sided. But again, like I said, I can barely tell the difference. Anyway, man, I, I've been running these for a while. I've hammered the shit out of them. I really like them. They are, uh, they're fantastic. And if you're looking to get a power meter, I hope this helps you navigate that. Just look at affordability, look at reliability, look at longevity. And I think that's going to take you down a path that leads you to, you know, the best product for you. Anyway, that's my review. As always, Vegan Cyclist. Yeah.